Yep. Yep. I couldn't agree more. Yep. Yep. This is so true. This is so true. This actually is mind blowing. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for joining again. Um, this is my second video of the Jordan P. Peterson reaction series. And um, before we dive into the reaction, I would really thank you for commenting um, and liking the previous video. And as well, I would like to especially thank Natural Born Gamer. Um, he suggested me to react to the following video. So the video actually is called um, Choose Your Sacrifice, uh, Jordan Peterson's Best Advice to Young Adults. Um, it's from After School. Um, and it has roughly 1.6 million views. It was published in January this year. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is nice, by the way. <laughs> sacrifice you get to pick your damn sacrifice that's all you don't get to not make one you're sacrificial whether you want mm. to be or not this is the peter okay okay <laughs> so first of all um if i'm reacting to something really first at in my life so to say um i'm i'm a talkative guy i tend to if I leave the road, I continue until I travel to, I don't know, once around the world. So this video probably won't be extremely short and extremely concise. Um, but I think um, I have to speak to you um, when an idea crosses my mind. Otherwise, I will, I don't know, not really be able to put it in the right way. Um, and then it's not a real reaction. Um, so. First of all, a very interesting statement Jordan B. Peterson is making here. He's, and I, maybe this is, is this uh, will be important in 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 the yeah in the continuation of the video. But I really think this is an interesting hypothesis to say you have to pick your sacrifice and you will make a sacrifice in your life either if you want it or if you won't. So there's no way around. You have to sacrifice. And um, yeah, I'm very interested in um, how he is backing that up um, and how he is argumenting it. Peter Pan's story, roughly speaking, is Peter Pan is this magical boy. Pan means mm -hmm. Pan is the god of everything, roughly speaking, right? And so it's not. Yeah, and um, also one thing I want to mention at this point. Um, in the meantime, I've watched a little bit more of Jordan P. Peterson's um, content as well as um, parts of his biblical series, which I really enjoyed. But this eats up a lot of time um, if you really want to understand it and um, kind of also taking some notes um, to memorize it a little bit or to be able to implement it in your life. Some, some value nuggets you get out of those videos. But um, nevertheless, what I really like about Jordan P. Peterson is that he is referring to those childhood stories. And in my opinion, um, childhood stories always continue kind of a very pure, pure form of truth. And um, it's like a seed you are planting in, 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 the, in the minds of, 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 of children, of young people. And those seeds um, yeah, they develop into a kind of a moral compass um, or they have the potential to develop in, into a moral compass which gives you the, um, the and, and, and kind of a guideline um, if you are facing difficulties in life um, which are far more complex than um, like an easy story but this guideline will, will help you to make the right decision um, or at least not the worst decision so that your likelihood to not ending up and at the edge of society um, increases so yeah that's the reason why i really like that john peterson is going into those essential pure truths of those stories because i think not everybody is seeing those stories as as this kind of value valuable 
um, I have a lot of friends um, in my age, which are, um, they don't really think any second about those stories and then don't, and I would assume that they don't really think about telling those stories their own children. So this is an, yeah, so, but let's continue. An accident that he has the name Pan and he's the boy that won't grow up and he's magical. Well, that's because children are magical. They can be anything. They're nothing but potential. True. And Peter Pan doesn't want to give that up. Why? Well, he's got some adults around him, but the main adult is Captain Hook. Well, who the hell wants to grow up to be Captain Hook? First of all, you've got a hook. Mm. Yeah. Um, but at this point, um, I think Captain Hook is not the ideal representation of um, of an adult, so to say. Uh, the story, especially with the hook and his character, um, paint, painting him as like um, not as, as the bad guy, so to say. And of course, it's not very desirable to become the bad guy of a story. So, um, in in this sense, I would argue that um, it is. Yeah, for children it is probably they don't really they don't really uh, in this case if they hear the story then they probably don't want to grow up to Captain Hook, but um, there is something good about becoming mature, becoming an adult. Um, so yeah, let's continue. Second, you're a tyrant, and third, you're chased by the dragon of chaos with a clock in its stomach, right? The crocodile. It's already got a piece of you. Well, that's what happens when you get older. Time has already got a piece of you. And mm. eventually, it's got a taste for you. And eventually, it's going to eat you. And so Hook is so traumatized by that that he can't help but be a tyrant. And then Peter Pan looks at... Yeah, yeah. That's that's also very interesting. Um, since John Pearson is, is uh, saying that um, Captain Hook is basically not a tyrant based of his own decision, based of his own, um, yeah, own desire or um, kind of an uh, internal uh, character. Um, he is basically, he has no other option to become, uh, as to become an tyrant because time is chasing him or because he's feared about time. Or maybe he is also not able to deal with the kind of pressure coming from a clock ticking your life away, to put it in, um, yeah, Linkin Park's words, so to say. <laughs> so yeah, let's continue. Traumatized Hook and says, well, no, I'm not sacrificing my childhood for that. Yeah, this is also a trauma for Peter Pan, to, to be fair. <laughs> and um, traumas are never, never good in a way, because they tend to um, school you a little bit or to push you too far um, on one side if it's for example if you break up with your girlfriend or if your girlfriend or, go or go girlfriend if your boyfriend uh, cheats on you for example this could lead to a trauma and this all this could lead to kind of an um, bad view about uh, females or males in general so um, or partners in general so um, yeah this is if you look at this uh, picture, then that could be a trauma for Peter Pan, which could then, in fact, lead Peter Pan to a very adult, adverse um, point of view. So that's fine, except he ends up king of Lost Boys. In Neverland, well, Neverland doesn't exist, and who the hell wants to be king of the Lost Boys? And yeah. he also... Yeah, this is probably kind of the overcompensation I tried to um, mention before. Um, he was so much into becoming a child or staying a child that he started leading children in Neverland, which is not there. Um, and he's leading Lost Boys. So, yeah, it's kind of an um, extreme, but it's also necessary in, in stories like this to picture the extremes because then, because then you have enough clarity to make the concept and the idea behind sharp enough sacrifices the possibility to have a real relationship with a woman because that's Wendy right and she's kind of conservative middle-class London dwelling girl she wants to grow up and have kids and have a life she accepts her mortality she accepts her maturity yeah and this is this is also what I tried to mention earlier is um, 
there is not there, there is there, there are advantages and disadvantages as always um, but there are also really i mean advantages to growing up um, for example having children for example um, founding a family um, and also having having this kind of control of your life um, yeah so it's not ideal to think about growing up as something bad peter pan has to content himself with tinkerbell she doesn't even exist she's like she's like the fairy of porn she doesn't exist yeah she's the substance. Yeah. yeah and this is really this is really okay this is opening up a whole different box <laughs> and if i dive into this box i promise you i will continue to talk three hours probably but um, i try to make it really short um because this is this is something i've experienced and i see a lot in my in my personal um yeah my personal um environment my my friends um and i think this is really a threat for our generation and for um, younger generations as well because you have this virtual world um, around you and you're born with the with a, with a world full of technology enabling you to escape into an into a model of reality and um, coming from an, from an engineering background scientific background um, models are always kind of simplifications of uh, the reality so simplifications always mean that you don't have the complexity and that you don't have enough opportunity in this way to really as a human to really um, make a sufficient amount of experiences bad and good ones and in all shades of gray between those both um, to to form your own character to get like some scratches to get a little bit more rough to develop an edgy character and then with, um, when I'm saying edgy I don't mean like an, um, a rude character in a way but what I mean is like um, if another opinion hits you um, by conversation you've already made enough, enough experiences um, by the complexity of life going through life that you are not easily rolled and pushed in in one direction you can think and you can refer to something which happens to you in life which happens to you uh, in the past so you kind of are a little bit more st st stable 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 um, in your opinion and if you lose this complexity of life and if you're um, escaping into simpler um, and not so complex uh, models of reality um, basically your character and this is what I see as a threat your character becomes very um, very very smooth um, and it's like an, a, like a very smooth ball and if something hits you you can you, you roll and you change your opinion and otherwise if you if you experience in life if you have this complexity if you're fighting the chaos so to say um, then you develop this rough character um, or more stable character so but okay that was the short extra course in a way so let's continue Institute for the real thing and so but the dichotomy that you're talking about is very tricky because there's a sacrificial element in maturation right yeah. you have to sacrifice the pluripotentiality of childhood for the actuality of a frame oh, yeah. and the question is well why would you do that well one reason is it happens to you whether you do it or not you can either choose your damn limitation. Yep. Yep. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. This is really... Um, <laughs> this is really something I, I'm, I'm going through right now. Exactly the same decision. Um, to... And this is, I mean, I, I've just had this conversation with one of my colleagues at work um, for you, maybe short um, background information so that you can put it into context. I'm, I've, I finished university last year and um, now I'm working full time in, an, in a corporation as an, as an engineer um, and also kind of a little bit more into sales, but it's technical, but nevertheless. Um, yeah, so the discussion we had was um, once if you if you want to pursue a career you have to decide to either become a specialist or a generalist um, and you have to make this decision um, of course at the beginning you can kind of experience and try both 
but um, if you're in this highly competitive field um, there's no way um, to be like an universal universal genius to put it in this way to be able to be an, uh, an specialized in, in specialized and at the top of the hierarchy and also a generalist to understand a lot of stuff and to see the big picture and um, I think this is this is and this is exactly what I what I'm right now thinking about of my life is to um, sacrifice in this way uh, the plural portality so to to become and morph into everything I now decide I want to be um, to to really one thing and um, yeah so I'm really struggling with this or you can let it take you unaware when you're 30 or even worse when you're 40 and then yeah and this is exactly what I'm fearing if you're not making a decision right now or well, not right now but in the near future then you will end up like too, too thin spread uh, to put it in this way you didn't make a decision you didn't put those hours of learning of training of um, studying into this um, and then at the end of the day um, once you wake up and you ask yourself well what happened um, once I had all this potential and I was not the dumbest guy I was um, kind of, I mean a lot of people probably will also tell tell you that you can do you can achieve a lot of stuff and then you achieve nothing and you ask yourself why and I think this is this is really 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 important to that young people hear this um, because if you want to achieve something in life you have to yeah I agree with John Peterson and to put it short I agree <laughs> so let's continue that is not a happy day you see, I yeah. see people like this, and I think it's more and more common in our culture because people can put off mat maturity without suffering an immediate penalty. But all that happens is the penalty accrues, and then when it finally hits, it just wallops you. Because when you're 25, you can be an idiot. Yeah. It's no problem. Even Yeah, I'm 26, by the way, so I can still be an idiot. <laughs> when you're out in a job search, it's like, well, you don't have any experience and you're kind of clueless. It's, yeah, yeah, you're young. You know, it's no problem. We can... That's what young people are like, but they're full of potential. Okay, well now you're the same person mm -hmm. at 30. It's like people aren't so thrilled about you at that point. It's like, what the hell have you been doing for the last 10? Well, um, guys, as always, just hit um, hit the like button if you know somebody in, or if you have the, um, how's it called, the, the worries that somebody in your, in your friend's circle um, is becoming this kind of dirty guy who's never yeah, who ends up like the picture here? I I I definitely knew some of some people. In years. Well, I'm just as clueless as I was when yeah, I was 22. This is exactly yeah, what I mean. Yeah, but you're not 22. You're an old infant, right? And that's an ugly thing, an old infant. So, yeah. the the re part of the reason you choose your damn sacrifice, because the sacrifice is inevitable. But at least you get to choose it. And then there's something that's, that's even more complex than that in some sense is that. Yeah, yeah. And just another another thought hit my mind is this. Um, it's like this delayed um, gratification. Maybe it's called this way. But your decision to put to make the sacrifice right sacrifice right now is usually coming with short term um pain short-term disadvantages so you don't experience this positive loop but um this positive stuff is coming like next year or in five years and so you're able to um you have to be able to delay this uh, gratification and i think in in today's world especially if you're looking at social media um and how those apps are designed um it's like um, you post a video, for example, um, or you post an, you post a picture on Instagram, and you immediately immediately get likes. Um, so you immediately want to have like a positive feedback of your action. And um, I recently, I mean, I've I've got into David Goggins, if you may know him. Um, I read his book, awesome book, um, highly recommended. You, uh, you can't hurt hurt me. 
and, um, and then I started to 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 um, run. <laughs> I think everybody is starting to run after reading this book, but um, it was like really it sucks to do the good stuff. Yeah, so much. Yeah, let's continue. The problem with being a child is that all you are is potential, and it's really low resolution. You could be anything, but you're not anything. So then you go and you yeah, adopt an yeah, apprenticeship, this is so true. This roughly is so speaking, true. and then you become, at least you become something. And when you're something, that makes the world open up to you again. You know, like if you're a really good plumber, then you end up being far more than a plumber, right? You end up being a good... Yeah, this is... this is... Um... That's interesting. Let's continue. The employer, not not the plumbers. I'm not putting plumbers down. It's like more power to plumbers. They've saved more lives than doctors. So Ooh. hygiene. Hygiene. Right? So yeah. you know, if you're a really good plumber, well, then you have some employees. You run a business. You 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 make you you train some other people. Well, this is um, another. This is was the thought. Um, I mean, just because you are an exceptionally good plumber doesn't mean that you have all the abilities to become a leader to open up a company to have the ability to yeah, be this entrepreneur to have this spirit um, I mean what I did is I tried to copy and paste it to other domains for example programming and um, of course there are guys who are extremely prof uh, proficient in in program programming but um, on an, in my job I have a lot to do with programmers and what I see is those guys are extremely extremely they are extremely knowledgeable and proficient in the very very tiny space and a lot of them even though they are extremely professional at this they are not really um, interested in becoming a leader so yeah this kind of potential didn't didn't open up again um, for them in a way but either way if they're happy with that more power to them definitely well you enlarge their lives you're kind of a pillar of the community you you have your family it's you can mm. once you pass yep. through that narrow training period which narrows you and constricts you and develops you at the same time then you can come out the other end with a bunch of new possibility at hell at half and Jung talked about that he thought that the proper okay okay here sorry I have to stop again um, since this actually is mind-blowing this is really mind-blowing why why is it mind-blowing for me um, because as I mentioned before I've kind of have the same problem right now I really try to think through it um, to, because I've I, it was hard for me or it is still hard for me to accept to sacrifice potential um, and to decide to become in my case like a very good engineer um, because I have the um, or a, a lot of my mentors uh, told me that um, I'm also able to 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 talk to people <laughs> in a way and engineers usually they are very very into details and very into mathematics and they're not not people person um, and I don't want to generalize um, in, in this way but um, this is like the general perception um, I've at least I received um, going through study and um, going through like one year of corporate uh, career so um, and I was I, I'm, I was really really afraid of losing all those possibilities mm especially because training is required of course training is required and you you are you're losing time basically um, because you have to get those hours and you have to get those study time and you have to get those experiences in and by investing a lot of time um, you are losing pro I mean I lost a lot of friends in, in the past especially guys from uh, from university and um, also you don't have a lot of time for all, all, the, all the fun stuff because you're working all the time and then you're training and then you try to get a little bit ahead. So you're kind of afraid of losing your life and just existing in work. And um, if, if you project this development into the future um, and pair it with a career which in, in, in at least in my case, I mean, I can just um, talk in my case. I'm, I try to climb up the ladder, and um, if you if you overlay it, like 
I'm right now totally overwhelmed with how much time I have to invest. And then this is not going away in the future. I mean, it, it, and if, if, if the career, um, if the paths and the steps are going uh, upwards, it tends to be more complicated and you have to put more hours in and more hours and more hours in. And I was afraid to really lose the, all this potential. But this, uh, this picture there and the argument of Jordan B. Peterson is really giving me hope that, and it makes absolutely sense. I mean, if you put the training in and if once you pass those narrow passage, um, you, you then probably become root, uh, develop routines, become um, proficient in, in, in the core abilities, and then you're able to expand. And this is, yeah, I definitely will think the whole night about that picture. <laughs> Part of the proper path of development in the last half of life was to rediscover the child that you left behind as you were apprenticing. Yeah. And so then you get to be something and regain that potential at the same time. Very, very smart. Well, he was very, very smart. So that's very wise, very wise thing to know. Sacrifice. You get to pick your damn sacrifice. That's all. You don't get to not make one. Yeah. You're sacrificial whether you want to be or not. That's a good thing to know as well. You can't cross the ocean unless you're willing to lose sight of the shore. Yeah, yeah. So my feelings uh, right now are really yeah, to put it in this way. Um, I agree with John Peterson um, and I now really understand what he's meaning by there is no way around um, sacrificing anything in life since either you're either you're doing doing it voluntarily um, then you ex at least have the choice to put uh, to choose your you have the chance to choose your sacrifice um, but you're also accountable for for the miserable life you're experiencing after chan uh, the short-term miserable life um, after you picked your sacrifice and actually are out in the field and doing the hard stuff um, because if you're not choosing your sacrifice proactively you always have the excuse of well life did it to me um, or my my parents were over parent parentish i don't know um like they did too much of caring and um, if you put it, if you choose your sacrifice by sacrifice by yourself, you're accountable for that. And you are from this point on responsible to achieve and to succeed and to get there where you want to go. And I think um, this is something which really, and this is something really, all the videos I've watched uh, from jo um, John B. Peterson, there's always this kind of a gold value nugget in, in, the, in his content, which I can really kind of take out, plug it into my life. And, and, and I have the, always the feeling that it helps me in, in making at least not the worst decision. And, um, yeah, so I try to, to land the plane on that. So if you like the video, um, please, um, consider to, to give it a thumbs up. Um, and again, I was really, I was really enjoying reading through the comments, um, responding as good as I could. And, um, yeah, I would like, I would really like and love to hear your opinion, um, especially about Jordan P. Peterson's, um, arguments and, um, his, his content, so to say. Um, and yeah, what do you think about the reaction? What do you think about my ideas? Um, let's, let's chat below and yeah. So, in this sense, let's get this mic out of my face. <laughs>